Welcome to the Business Blueprint Podcast, where we take you on an exciting adventure through our triumphs and challenges and failures in creating and maintaining a thriving six, seven, and eight-figure business. Get ready to dive into our strategies, decisions, and yes, even valuable lessons we've learned from our missteps. That's not all. We'll also bring you industry-leading guests who will provide you with their priceless insights and wisdom. Stay tuned because the captivating journey of the Business Blueprint begins right now. Hi, I'm Charles Hatley with Rebecca Malone and Dan Cuneo, and this is The Business Blueprint. Each week, we talk about trials and tribulations that we face as we continue to build our business from seven to eight to nine figures. This week, we wanted to talk about something that I think everyone who is involved in business in any way is inundated with, and that is the constant advice on how to be better at business that you get from every single source that exists in every single platform. And what I'm talking about is how you're supposed to get up at 4.30 a.m. I think Robin Sharma, 4.30 a.m. Club, has a book on that. You're supposed to read five books a day. You're supposed to run 15 miles a day. You're supposed to lift weights for three hours. You're supposed to go to work for 10 hours. You're supposed to spend 15 hours with your family. You're supposed to get out in nature for 28 hours a day. And it just seems like I can't possibly do all this in a day. Well, you know, Rebecca and Dan, I want to talk to you today about the advice that you see, the value of the advice, and how you kind of parse through and say, you know what, I think I'd like to try that. I want to be open-minded, but this is dumb. So Dan, I want to start with you about the stuff that you see. It doesn't seem like there's more now or less now, or maybe it just seems like there's more. It seems like there's a lot more out there. And as you were talking earlier, I thought the last one you were going to say is, and someone says you can pause time because there's no way you can do all of that in one day, yet alone probably even one work week. But it's it's really just, in, in my opinion, just acknowledging and accepting that I need help. We can always improve. We can always do better. But the question is, where do I need that improvement? What am I looking to do? And one of the things that I've been picking up on some of the books that I've read and the podcasts I listen to is just kind of take it one step at a time. It's like, how do you eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. But there's all these help uh, options out there that are saying, I can double your revenue. I can grow you to a 10 figure in, in a matter of a couple months. I can get you thousands of leads. Contact me. I'm the best out there that there is. Well, that should be your, your first red flag. If anyone says that they're the best, that's always to me a red flag. And usually I just delete those emails. And then I'll, I'll read some just to see if there is there something that I may be interested in. Uh, I'm willing to try almost anything to be successful, but it's what, what are they offering? Because some of those things that you mentioned, they may sound silly, but I want to dig in and say, okay, well, why are you telling me that I need to be up at 5 a.m.? Why are you telling me that I need to do all this exercise? How does that help my, my business? And it's just having conversations with some of these entrepreneurs or these coaches that are out there as to why do you think that that would help me? Here's my situation. This is, these are my goals. What do you suggest that I can do to maybe improve on? And then in your experience, what has worked, what hasn't worked? I am always more interested in, in really what hasn't worked because maybe I'm doing something a different way or maybe it's something I can learn from. I always, you know, we, we've talked several times on, on this podcast, you know, failures are a positive is what can we learn from them? They're, it's a learning opportunity, but I, I'm always being um, solicited advice on you need to do this. You need to do that. And it's sometimes it's a little challenging to flush through some of that, that white noise that's out there, but there's some value into talking to coaches but it's, you just really want to make sure that it's the right coach, the right fit, and you want to know exactly, okay, what are my goals and, and what do I need to do to get there? What can I improve on? And that's where really having that open discussion with these coaches comes into play. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I brought up the Robin Sharma book. I love that book, 4.30 a.m. Club. I, it really spoke to me because I already got up early, you know, so it wasn't a, a big life change for me to say, oh, you know, 5 a.m. is okay. It's what time I already get up. <laughs> So Rebecca, what do you do? You know, you, you, you see this advice. Do you try some of it? Do you think about it? How do you go through it and say, how can I be better every day? Yeah, I think a lot of it tends to be overkill. And at one point I got a, a planner and I can't remember who it was that marketed this planner, but it's, you know, one of those people. And it was like, you're supposed to get up in the morning and journal. And then you have to like, think of these five things. And then you have to like, be creative for a certain amount of time. And it was all, you know, every single day was like measured out. And that was just way too much. After day one, I was like, I'm done. I'm never doing any of these things again. Um, And so we really have to find what works and what fits for you in, in this particular stage of life. 
So if you have little kids that are up all night screaming, you might not be in the 5 a.m. club for a little while, right? And I think it's okay to give yourself a little bit of time and say, okay, I'm not in the right stage of life where this particular thing is going to work for me right now. Maybe it will in the future, but for right now, this this is just not going to vibe with, <laughs> with my current schedule. So a lot of things do work for me. I am I am an early bird. I like to get up. I like to do a certain amount of exercise. I like to have some outside time see the sunlight a little bit here and there. I like to make sure I see my kids enough. But outside of that, it's like if I can fit one or two maybe additional things that I can improve a little bit here and there, that's great. Um, and who is it that says if you improve something by 1%, if you improve by 1% every day, right, it all just stacks on on top of each other. And so you don't have to do it all today. You can add in one little habit. You can add in reading a chapter of a book. You can add in one little thing um, and see how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel more productive? Do you feel more in mm -hmm. tune with what you're trying to do in your business? And if so, keep it and maybe add something else. But for me, I am slow to add anything new. It's like I have my check boxes, what I like, what makes me happy. If something else fits and it works in this stage of life, great. If not, I'm going to push it to the side and think about it later. You know, you said something very important. You have to give yourself a little bit of grace. You know, in this podcast, we've talked about giving others grace and saying, look, man, you screwed up. That's okay. Sit down and learn from it. You have to do that to yourself too. You know, just because, you know, I like getting up early. I like to lift weights for 90 minutes and then run. And during those, while I'm lifting, I like to listen to audiobooks. Well, there's sometimes I just get bored of audiobooks. I can't stand another audiobook for a while and I want to listen to stupid music. Right. And, you know, then I'm like, ah, you know, I haven't listened to a book. I haven't finished a book this week. Like, what am I doing? Who cares? Right. Who cares? The cumulative of what I'm doing is, is still good. And then I get back at listening to audiobooks because it's what I like to do. Uh, you know, Dan, I know that you travel some. How do you take a routine that re is relatively successful with you for you at home and take that on the road? It can be challenging because there's obstacles that you have no control over, whether if you're driving, if there's traffic or an issue with the, the transportation, or if you're flying, your flight's delayed or canceled. And it's just being able to, to have that flexibility to ebb and flow and to know, I mean, to your point, routines can sometimes be deviated from or even broken, but that doesn't mean that you're going to fail or you're setting yourself back. This is more of an, an obstacle that it's a challenge that we can overcome. And it's how you overcome that to me is, is really what's important. So when, you, when you're traveling for work or even pleasure, you have certain routines, but you, you, you can add new routines. So for when I travel, I mean, I usually get up even earlier because I don't have to worry about any family issues or do anything, it's just me getting up. So it allows me that extra time to get ready for the day. If I wanted to go to the gym, if I wanted just to kind of just sit there and, and just meditate and prepare for the day, it allows me that ability to do so. And, and I like the change. Change, in, in my opinion, is good. It allows you to appreciate what has been working, but then it allows me to think, okay, well, maybe I want to change some things up and, and add or subtract uh, in, into my routine. Because uh, when you were saying it really resonated with me because I'm one of those rare birds that likes to listen to audiobooks when I work out too. And, you know, sometimes it's just like, oh, this is, this stinks. I'm not getting anything out of it. It's essentially white noise in my head. I couldn't even tell you what they're talking about. So then I'll listen to, you know, music or, you know, sports podcast or something like that. And then I go back and I'll, um, catch back up on the books or those other learning podcasts. And I get so much more out because I'm more, I'm energized. And, and then that's the benefit, at least for me, when I travel, when I do deviate from certain routines, it allows me to get out of that being so rigid. And, and I just, I feel more energized and more focused on, on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you were talking about earlier in the 4.30 AM club or the 5 AM club, I remember at this one company, there was this employee who was more productive in the evening than in the morning. And so I decided, well, let's experiment. If you want to work in the evening, that's when you're most productive. Great, let's try it out. And it worked out beautifully. And what made me think of that is, I, I think a lot of times it was 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m., it's just getting prepared for the day and getting yourself in that mindset. So when you can do what you need to do, and then when something happens in the daytime, you have the ability to take care of it. Well, if you're more productive in the evening, just kind of flip it. Don't think that you always have to get up at 5 a.m. because there are 
a lot of successful people out there that just don't like to get up before the sun rises. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be a failure. It's just where are you most productive? A lot of people are more productive in the mornings, but you may not be that person. So whatever works best for you, that's where I think you should really start focusing on. And then start looking out to what, what coaches are out there and kind of looking at some of the advice that's being solicited to you too. Maybe I can implement one or two things, but I, I agree with Rebecca. I tried implementing a ton of things at once and I got lost and confused and frustrated. And I'm like, well, this thing, this isn't for me. I, I kind of suck. I'm a failure, but it's just because I was just trying everything. It's like, no, no, no. Let's just try one thing at a time and, and see what happens. Yeah. If you, if you asked me to journal every day, that would last for zero days. I, I'm not going to journal. It's never going to happen. Uh, I can talk about journaling for the rest of my life. I still wouldn't get it done. Um, you know, I'm probably one of the world's worst travelers when it comes to work. You know, Dan, you and I met up at one of our offices and I like to fly early. So I like to fly early because those flights are rarely delayed. So I got up, went directly to the airport at 5 a.m., you know, got there, forgot to eat all day long. And at seven o'clock at night, finally got back to the hotel. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to miss my workout today. So I went and worked out before I ate all day. And so I, I put myself behind because it's not a good idea. And if I had just given myself the grace to say, look, man, you didn't eat today. You've been up since 5 a.m. You were at the office all day. Maybe we just do something like watch TV tonight. It, it would have been more helpful for the long run than trying to stick to that regimen of I, I can't miss my workout today. So, you know, Rebecca, when you're going through it and people ask you for advice, one of the things that always gets me is I look at this advice online and I'm like, how do these people think they're successful? Like, why do you think they're successful? So successful that they can now give advice. What does it feel like when people ask you for advice? You know, I, I try to be very upfront in like, this is what works for me. And I am not a 100% productive person. So, you know, take it with as many grains of salt as you want to. But in order for me to get to like 10% efficiency, these are the things that help me out. If you're already operating above that level, maybe my advice is, is not the most helpful thing. But, you know, I, I'm always very upfront about like, this is what works for me right now in this phase. And in this moment, next month, it might be something totally different. I am not a person that has been locked into a particular regimen or routine for the past 20 years. And, you know, every, like, they talk about those people that every morning they have like the same breakfast, the same coffee, the same, you know, they do the exact same thing every single day. I'm not one of those people. So I know what's working for me right now in this moment. And if I can offer a little bit of advice to someone who's struggling with something that maybe I recently struggled with, I'll say, well, this is something that was helpful for me. Kind of a take it or leave it, right? You're not wrong for doing it your way. You're not wrong for doing it a different way. Do whatever works for you. Um, but it's it's giving that grace and giving that honesty to say, like, I'm not a 100 percent, you know, capacity person right now. Um, but this this takes me up before wherever I was, you know, last week or, or whatever it may be. And, and you know, that, that, that's a great answer. You know, what worked for me, it, it, it may be not going to work for you. You know, if somebody said, hey, Charles, what do you eat for breakfast? Fish and rice and green beans. It's gross. It's a, it's a menagerie of fishes. It's two pieces of mahi and a piece of salmon. You know, nobody wants to do that. And, and then I think, why in the world would I go out to LinkedIn and present myself as this authority? And like every morning you need to get up, you need to live for 90 minutes and run three miles and then eat fish and rice. People are like, this guy sucks. So Dan, I'm going to ask you the same questions I asked Rebecca. So when somebody's talking to you and say, Hey man, what do you do? How do you parse that feeling of like, for me, I don't want to say you would think this, but for me, it's like, why do you think I'm successful? So I got one question for you. Like, how do you give that advice, but not try to sound like a um, pompous, try to sound pompous? Right. You know, for me, it's tough because I don't feel that I'm successful. And that's something I need to work on. And a lot of times I feel I have this imposter syndrome that we've talked about on, on previous uh, podcasts. But I'm flattered, but then I'm thinking, okay, it actually sometimes stresses me out because I don't want them to emulate everything I'm doing because what if it doesn't work for them? And then like, oh my God, you, you're an idiot. Why are you trying to do that? You know, but I, I, I just walk them through it. And I agree with Rebecca. What works for me may not work for you, but maybe try some version of it. Uh, a lot of times I just try to advise, just make sure you're mentally prepared for the day. Uh, that's probably my biggest piece of advice. Don't stress over everything. Just try to at least accomplish one thing 
and learn one thing for that day. That's usually for the past few months has kind of been when someone asked me, what makes you get up in the mornings or what allows you to get through the day and what has contributed to some of your success? A lot of it is it's just learning from failures, quite frankly, but it's just being able to acknowledge, you know what, I don't have to do everything today. I, I agree with Rebecca. It's, you know, it can be very stressful. I'm waking up. Okay, I got to do everything today. No, because then everything that you want to get done is most likely not going to get done or it's going to get done not the, the best way possible. So it's acknowledging you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be at that 100%. But as long as you can get through the day, write down a couple of things that you want to try to get accomplished for the day and then cross those off your list. I'm not a journalist either. I probably wouldn't even know where to start if I was journaling. Like, what do I write down here? <laughs> Hi, my name is, you know, but I do like writing lists. So I can, you know, so if it's a good feeling to know I've checked something off that I wanted to get done for the day. But I also don't want that list to be so uh, voluminous that it's contributing a lot of the stress. But to kind of go back to your, your question, it's just take each day at a time and, and know that if you, you learn one thing. Great. If you can get one thing accomplished for that day, that's great. Then the next day, maybe add a little bit more onto it and then kind of know where your, your breaking point is. So you don't want to overexert yourself because then you're, it'll be to your detriment. It would. And, you know, I'm the biggest problem of overexerting myself. You know, I had a long weekend and decided on the hottest day of the year to clean out the attic and uh, dig out stumps and basically gave myself a heat stroke, digging out stumps during the middle of the heat of the day. You know, I, I like what you talk about just being ready. You know, it's getting yourself mentally prepared for the day. I don't run because I like running. I, I run because when I run, it seems like all of this stuff in my mind starts clearing up and I see these ideas. And you, the, the two of you actually see it because we use an app called Microsoft Tasks where we keep a list of things to talk about. And you'll see some horribly spelled things that I'm trying to say because I'm trying to write them while I'm jogging. And, uh, but there's so much for me that comes out of that moment that I can start writing things down. And, you know, I, I kind of, I was reading John Maxwell the other day and he talked about when he reads books, he always writes in the things and then like writes what page it was on and kind of what he learned from it. And then he gives it to his assistant who journals it for him because he can't do it. He doesn't have time to do it. Uh, and then I was talking about Tiago Forte has this book called The Second Brain, where basically it's just you write down things that you learn. So like you and Rebecca, Dan, are talking about, you know, you learn things, you got to write them down so you don't forget them. And, and I think that that's probably one of, in all the advice I see, not a lot of people talk about like, hey, you're consuming all of this knowledge. Where are you putting it at? I can't possibly remember it. There was an antidote by Albert Einstein. Somebody asked him what the speed of light was. He's like, I don't know. And they're like, how do you not know what speed of light is? He goes, it's in a book. Why would I bother remembering, memorizing that? I think he had it memorized, but I, he was making a point. Don't waste your brain space on things that are easily somewhere else and you know where to go get them. So I want to thank you, Dan and Rebecca, for joining me on part one of business advice that we see. Uh, this is the business blueprint. Please like or subscribe uh, to listen to what we're talking about each week. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about part two uh, of business advice. And we're going to talk about something that has been really interesting to me. And that is the change in what work-life balance means uh, that I see everywhere. So I look forward to talking to you all next week. And until then, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And we'll talk to you then. Hi, this is Dan Cuneo with The Business Blueprint. Thank you for taking time to listen to this week's podcast. Please join us next week for part two.